Okay, here we are back inside Matrix Gold once again. Thanks for tuning in. I apologize. I haven't posted anything here recently. Uh, working on something, uh, and I'm really kind of deep into it. Uh, but it is working for you, actually. Uh, it's just uh, I, I'm getting it everything ready okay uh that's really all i'm going to say at this point <laughs> but uh, i am working for you uh and the last thing would be is all your comments thanks so much uh i i do have them listed uh, out and i will get to them uh here hopefully in the near future uh it's just this new project's kind of taking up a lot of my time at the moment so i apologize but i i will get back at answering all your questions even the one on the to design the ring on the facebook post if some of you might have seen i i will do that one here uh it's really cool design so uh i i will get to that as well uh, today, what we're going to do, though, I just want to post something very quickly, uh, is go into our gems, and we're going to grab a uh, stone here. I'm going to go in here to my list, and I'm just going to bump it up. I think the default is a point uh, 70, a 70 point. I'm going to just bump it up to a little uh, 1.03 carat stone, uh, and we'll just take that. And then now, before I do anything else, I'm going to go in here, and I'm just going to click here so I can set a specific height. And you can select any height height that you're wanting to design this at I'm just going to go ahead and choose a six and then bump it up to there right and then I'll just go ahead and hit enter I'm going to take that stone go back to my gym offset which is an awesome command really like it and I'm going to bump it into a negative point two so it goes into the stone to a negative point two you can take it to negative point three it, uh, it's really a personal preference uh, and then I'm just going to go ahead and uh, hit enter here I'm going to keep it right there on my girdle but I am going to take it in into my stone just a little bit, right? Uh, and at, at the second here, for just a few seconds, I'm going to go ahead and hide that uh, gemstone. Now I'm going to go back to my curves, go to my line, change to my creation layer, make sure my O snaps are on and my quad snap are on. And I'm just going to pop it right there on that quad and then bring back my stone uh, so I can determine height, right? And I'll go in here, hold down shift, and I don't want it up to my girdle. I just want it down just a little bit below my girdle, somewhere around maybe uh, here. So you can see it's just a little bit below my girdle, right? I'm going to go ahead and select on that curve. I'm going to go ahead and click on this one again so I can s uh, set a specific uh, distance, right? And again, uh, you can, what, however thick you want it, you can uh, type in. I'm just going to type in a 1.2 and then off well before I do that I'm sorry I forgot a step there uh, I'm going to select on that and then w here when I, before I click on this I'm going to hold down uh, alt and then click on it right and then type in the 1.2 and set so I get a dupe right so it dupes it over 1.2 distance away from that other line there and now we'll just go straight up to blend curves we'll select this one and this one and it place it down here at the bottom we'll drag that up we'll drag that up i'll take this up to about a 1.2 uh, again you can do whatever height that you want and we'll just go ahead and hit enter and i'm going to take all that and join it together uh, history i'm not really worried about on this uh, now uh, we have that there. Now I'm going to go down here to my bottom around my C, uh, F4, right? Uh, and let's see, uh, we'll go back to the line and I'll snap this line to my F4 right there. And I'll just, it doesn't matter how far you drag it out and just kind of drag it out however far you want. I'm going to go to select this. I'm going to do that same thing, hold down Alt and click on that arrow so I can set a specific distance. And this one I'm going to set maybe up to a two okay uh or you could take it down a little you know height wise it doesn't really matter uh for the most part and now i'm going to go back i could right click or i can uh, right right click on my command line go to the line and just snap that close that right there uh, and then i'm going to right click and go to that quad end snap and then drag me a straight line something i don't know something like that and i'll right click bring it back and then drag it just a little bit over something like and down here past my other line, something like maybe that there should be okay but the thing is i can go ahead and select these and i do want to rebuild them for a second 
uh, I'm going to change them from a degree one to a degree two uh, and give me that third point in the center there, right? And I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn on those control points, right? I, I just want to give it a little bit of a, a bow. So something, you know, something like that on the inside and maybe something like uh, this on the outside, just a little bit of bow. And if you, you know, you can always go back in here and maybe move those around however you want, right? So, uh, you know, where, wherever you're wanting them, right? And I'll just go ahead and say that's cool. <laughs> and that's kind of what I'm looking for. And I'll just double tap on escape and get rid of those, right? Uh, at this point, uh, we'll go ahead and hide our gemstone. And we'll just take this and turn it to a gray and hide it. I'm a big guy on uh, keeping most things if I can. Uh, now we have this out here, right? It's kind of crazy. Uh, but we have uh, G0 here, right? It's, it's just a, a kink right and we want to have tangency uh you don't have to if you want this straight that's fine to give your jeweler a nice little ledge there to be able to cut his seat uh but i'm going to go ahead and take this i definitely probably want to do it to the outside though but uh, it's totally up to you of course uh, personal preference designers uh liberties right <laughs> but i want to go ahead and change it to g1 or tangency so i'm going to go down here to my edit tools click on that and go to match, right? Uh, before I do that, uh, I'm going to show you uh, G-C-O-N, G-Con, right? If you type in G-Con, you can find out the tangency of any two lines. So I have a line here until you select your first line, right near the end of this one here. Uh, and then it says select your uh, second curve, right? Which would be this one here. And you can see it says curves are G0. So it's a kink, right? Uh, okay, so now I'll go and grab that match. Uh, and then I'll take this top curve here. And then it says select the second one. It will be this one here. This little pop-up. You can have curvature. Uh, you can have position. Or you can change these around. We're going to go ahead. I'm not going to go ahead and join them right now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just hit OK. Okay, you could join them if you want. I'm going to right click and bring that back again and do the exact same thing to this because now we have a uh, tangency here, right? Now, if I type in that G C O N, uh, G con, and then I select that first curve and then select that surface, second one, I have G1, which is tangency, right? Uh, okay, so at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and select everything and we're going to go in here and have some fun with some trim action, all right? So I'm just going to go in here and start trimming some of this away, uh, get rid of that, get rid of that. So we have a nice uh, closed curve, hopefully, uh, when we're done and then. Uh, I'll go ahead and hit enter to, to get rid of that command and right away I'll just go ahead and join right so I joined all those curves together and I want to check to make sure plain closed curve right uh, and that's what I want because uh, it'll be easy for this next step so I'm going to go in I'll uh, select that uh, go to my solids go to extrude planer and then down here at the bottom extrude planer straight uh, and then I can make the prong bi as big as I want I'm going to turn on my gemstone now so I can kind of see okay I want that prong maybe I don't know uh, thickness wise that'll be around a one it looks like so I'll just uh, 0.4 or so it's a 0.8 something like that you can make this as big as you want we'll just go ahead and make it something something like that right doesn't really matter at this point yet uh, and then we'll go ahead and give it some shading all right now i'm going to go ahead and take that and i'm going to turn it to this color here uh, we don't need any of those curves anymore so i'm going to select them and change them to uh, gray right so we have this out here all right, <clears throat> there's a couple things here I, I you know, want to change. First of all, it's just a flat curve. You could keep it like this again. Again, it's personal preference. I've seen uh, prongs like this uh, set up. Uh, but this here, right here, right, it's squared off, kind of not cool. <laughs> so we're going to change that, right? Uh, we want, uh, we, otherwise it'd just be flat across the center, right? We want a little, uh, indentation in case our stone, we have some stones that are real deep, uh, that our culet will have a little bit extra room, right? So, uh, we're going to go here to our search. 
Uh, actually, the command is pretty close to there, but I'm going to type in M-O-V-E, move, just move, right? You know, give me a list of all the commands that have move in it or something like that. But the one we want is uh, move edge, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and select that move edge, right? And tell me, it'll ask me to select the edge to move. So I'm going to select this edge right here and then I'll just go ahead and press enter right and now I'm going to turn off snaps because sometimes they can get in the way and it says point to move uh, from right so I want to move it well actually before I turn off snaps I'm going to turn back on I'm going to snap to the middle there now I'm going to come back here and turn off snaps and I'm going to go to my uh, front viewport and I'm going to hold down shift and just kind of maybe give it a little uh, indentation there something like that right uh, so that now that curve is kind of going at a steeper angle, right? Uh, which should give us a little bit extra depth there. And we still have like a millimeter plus, uh, maybe almost a millimeter and a half, maybe 1.3, something like that there. Uh, so, but you can, again, uh, any distance you want. Uh, now we have this, and maybe we want to do some cleanup work before we go crazy on it. So let's go ahead and go to our solids. Oh, we have to go to uh, get rid of, uh, just open that up, delete all that in there so it gives back all your commands, right? Uh, and we'll go to solids menu and we'll do a flay edge since it's a closed surface uh, and do blend, right? And now select ends, edges to blend. We'll just uh, go through here and select uh, all these and... Yeah, that's really all I want to blend. Uh, and we'll select this one on the other side and this one here. And that should be good for me. Uh, and I'll just go ahead and hit enter. And I have preview set at yes in case it blows. I can go always go back and reset them here uh, and then hit enter. Uh, and we have something like this. I'll go ahead and check that. And we have a closed poly surface, right, which is good to go. Now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go to my transform, right, and I'm going to go to taper, all right. And this bottom part here, I'm going to choose it, taper this bottom part. Right now we only have the one handle. We don't have this direction handle. We have the link direction handle, right. So I'm going to go over here to my dynamic commands, enable second link, and click on that puppy right there. Now I have two handles out there that I can manipulate, right? So cool. And I'll just take this one out just a little bit, something like that. And then I'll go ahead and select uh, the other side. I'm going to go to the top here. And this one will go back to our uh, top. And actually, it's pretty close to where I want. So I'm just going to drag it in just a little bit, something like that, right? Uh, and then hit Enter, right? And it'll give you a, a dupe out there. The yellow one's the one we want to keep. It's flayed and everything. And then so the the original one we'll just go ahead and select and we'll go ahead and hide that to gray okay and before you do anything else first check make sure it's closed poly service before you do anything else right now would be a great time to go ahead and just do a full save it'll keep all this information here and it'll keep all this here for you right because you can do a lot of crazy things uh, with this right here right uh and i'm going to go ahead and take that and we'll change that to uh green here all right now uh what i'll do is i'll select that and we will go to uh rotate polar array right and right away we it gives us a fan design going out there but we can change our plane access here uh to our a z uh, and now everything is pointing straight up like we want uh, and it's all set off like we want. This is a five prong, but you can sit here. The reason why you saved it here is now you can always go back to here and you can create any, you can put a three stone and then do an under bezel if you want, or just a three stone head or three prong head, four prong, five prong, six, 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 eight. <laughs> There's all kind of uh designs you can make here and then you can always go back and redo heights uh you know you'll have to do heights and then do the prongs individually again but uh you know it, you can save all kind of stuff to your uh collections and heads or something uh so there's tons of designs that you could do and if you look right now we have a nice little uh v 
type shape going in there for our point, right? Uh, so we don't have to worry about busting that diamond when the diamond sets. Uh, it's not going to touch our uh, metal in there, right? Uh, so I'm just going to do a four prong here, here uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and hit enter, right? So we have this, and there should be two here on this side, I believe. I'm going to, it should be. I would, I'm going to go ahead and hide that. Eh, no, it didn't give it to me. Okay. Sometimes you'll have an extra here. Maybe I went ahead and hid it. I can't remember. <laughs> Sorry. I've been very, very busy here lately. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take that. We're going to ungroup this. So it'll give us the, the prongs individually. <laughs> Uh, sorry, my timing was off. Uh, so we'll go to solids here and uh, we'll go ahead and try our Boolean union. We'll go ahead and select our first surface and enter and our second surface and enter and enter and right click, bring that back. Select those two surfaces, enter, select this one, enter, enter. And one more time, right click, bring it back. These three surfaces, enter, so this one here, enter. Uh, and enter right and I'll take that and hide it and we still only have one item out there so that's great uh, now there you go there's a, a nice little uh, four prong peg head for, well it's not a peg right now it's a solitaire but you can uh, go ahead and put uh, shanks going into there or whatever however you want to set up shanks coming out here or whatever uh, but there's one couple more things here. Uh, I'm going to go to my top view and I'm going to turn it to wireframe. All right. Now I'm going to go to my curves menu and I am going to go to my a rectangle or box. Uh, and I'm going to do the drop down. It's probably best to go ahead and do grab the, the mid rectangle center and just select that one. And then I'll type it into my uh, F4. And then I'll go ahead and it says uh, length. I'm going to put a one millimeter uh, and enter. And then width, I'm going to go ahead and put a one millimeter and enter. So, oh, I, I went from a different view. So that's my bad. So I'll right click F4. I want the, the top view. Uh, F4 uh, and then one millimeter enter and one millimeter enter. And there's that little yellow uh, box, right? Now I'm going to go ahead and just bump that up just a little bit and then I am going to drag that down however far you want uh, so it gives us that give it some shading now the next thing this is an open surface open poly surface so we're going to go ahead and type in CAP enter and of course it's breaking his but it's no big deal uh, a closed poly surface right and the last thing I can do is go to my solids do that boolean union again select my first surface enter second surface enter uh, enter and then I'm just going to go ahead and grab all yellow and go in here now I have me a, a little peg head for it right uh, and you could uh, you know there's a lot of extra things you could do in here but uh, there you go uh, last maybe thing that you want to say you don't want it in that direction it's it's no big deal you just go in and click on the blue line type in 45 degrees and there you go and now it's kind of set up uh, as going uh, the north and south way right uh, so uh, yeah there you go. Uh, hopefully that helps. And if it does, please uh, like, subscribe, and uh, leave a comment. And I, I trust me, I, I, I've not forgotten about your questions and uh, asking things, and I, I, I will get to them. Uh, just give me a little time. Bear with me. I apologize. Uh, so thanks very much, and good designing.